Hello, my name is Greg Labarge. I'm a field specialist in agronomic systems with Ohio State University Extension. In this video we want to walk through the reading of a soil test report for phosphorus. So we do have a number of different things that can be represented in a number on a soil test report for phosphorus and we need to have an understanding of that and what is actually represented in that number so that we can go back to some of our resources and properly come up with a recommendation for that number that we see on an individual soil test report. Basically there are three things that you really want to look closely at on that report. First you want to know is that number and value reported as elemental phosphorus. If it has and is spelled out as P in a capital form as the, the letter or if we have phosphorus spelled out in the wording, then we can safely assume that we have elemental phosphorus and we can move on and understand the other two pieces. If there is something representing P205 or if there's some other designation of phosphorus there that is included on the report, then we can't use those numbers directly and you really need to go back to the lab and have them report or uh, convert those to elemental phosphorus for you. Fortunately most of the soil test reports 90 plus percent uh, are going to have it reported correctly um, so you don't need to worry about it just confirm for the most part that we do have elemental phosphorus that we're dealing with. The uh, number two item there is what units are being reported. Pounds per acre is one common designation. The other common designation is parts per million, or we will sometimes see that spelled out as milligrams per kilogram. Basically, uh, those are two very different units that we have, and we want to understand because of the vast difference that we have in those two numbers depending on what the units are behind it so that we fully understand what's represented in the number that we have on the report. The uh, third item we want to check out is what extractant is being reported. Uh, basically the extractant is the liquid that we mix with the soil that is sent into the lab that then uh, extractant liquid is red as far as the amount of phosphorus that is in that solution. Um, we do have two common extractants that are used for us here in the state of Ohio. One is a Bray P1, the other is a Malik 3. Uh, those two extractants are very good. Both of them uh, do a great job of evaluating the amount of crop available nutrient that is in the soil. Uh, but they are different numbers. Uh, they do not come up with equal values because of the differences in the two extractants. So we just need to understand which one is being reported on the form that we have coming back from the lab. Uh, basically, uh, when we talk about converting units, uh, there is a very easy way to get back and forth between pounds per acre and parts per million. Uh, just understand first that an acre furrow slice, which would be a slice of soil about that plow layer depth, 6.7 inches, um, and we, if we look over and take that amount of soil over a surface acre area, that um, weight would be about 2 million pounds of soil in that upper 6.7 inches. So how do we get from 2 million to 1 million, which is what parts per million represents? Uh, quick division by 2 is easy to get us to parts per million. Uh, when we put it in and look at it from a soil test report standpoint, if we have a soil test that is reported in 60 pounds of P per acre, uh, to get that to our uh, parts per million we would just take 60 divided by 2 and that would equal a 30 part per million soil test. Uh, 
you know, we mentioned this earlier, the extractants are the liquid that's mixed. Uh, Bray P1 and malic 3 are not equal as far as the amount of phosphorus they will extract, but both work very well. Uh, there is a conversion um, that has been created through the equation that you see here on the slide. And there is an accompanying fact sheet, uh, Understanding Soil Tests for Plant Available Phosphorus, uh, goes into a great deal of depth as far as uh, the two different uh, extractants that we see here and the equation that's developed. Um, fortunately, we don't really need to know anything more than taking a good close look at the form and seeing what is spelled out on it. Is it a Bray P1 or a Malik 3 test? The reason for that is that we've um, gone back and looked at our tri-state tables and we've put in basically two columns for representing the soil test value. The first column is if we have a Bray P1 test, we follow through down that column. If we have a Malik 3 test that's being reported, we follow through down the second column and use that to uh, come up with our recommendation. We don't need to make the conversion. The conversion is done through the table. So I think uh, we're set up to do exercise one with that background information and exercise one really just walks through uh, four soil test reports, has us pull out the information for phosphorus on that. If you have not already done it, uh, stop the video at this point, go back and download uh, the, the four pages that are for exercise one so that you can kind of follow along and fill things out as we go through um, this particular item and understand better a soil test report. Um, if you look at the top of page three um, in the exercise one document, you'll see the table that we have here. Uh, basically, we're going to look at four reports that in our came to us from some blind samples that we sent in. These are the actual report forms that were received back from four different labs. And uh, we're going to take a close look at them and pick out the valuation that we have for phosphorus on those four reports. Here, and we'll go back to page two to look at the reports. Uh, this is the sample report that is in the upper left-hand corner, report number one. We want to look for the value, the units, and the extractant on this particular example. So if we go over and look at the report form, we find that here's the line for phosphorus. The number that's being reported is 22. Uh, what units are being reported? We look across in the line description here and we see parts per million. And then what is the extractant used? In this case, we see that uh, M3 is being reported. Uh, we could see M with a Roman numeral 3 behind it or also C spelled out Malik 3, which is the representation that we have here of the extractant. So we have a 22 part per million Malik 3 soil test. If we go back to that table on the top of page 3, we can fill that in now. And we have Malik 3 parts per million 22. Let's take a look at uh, sample report number 2. We can look on this soil sample report. We look over, find phosphorus is the value 44. What units are being re represented here? It's pounds per acre. And then what test is being reported? And it is the Malik 3 extractant being reported here on this report as well. So now we can go back to the table. We can fill in Malik 3 pounds per acre 44 for report form number 2. Here is number 3 in the lower left hand corner of the um, page 2. And what we here find is the reporting for the phosphorus value. We look across and we find that it is a 10 value. We look at, into the units here and we find, or excuse me, the ex Yes, the units here, we find that they're in parts per million. And we don't see what kind of extractants reported. Actually, if we go over and look at the footnote 2 down below, we find that this is a Bray P1 test that is being reported. 
to our report form here we can fill in the values and information and we find that we have a Bray P1 test reported in pounds per acre and the value is 10. Let's look at the final report and what we see here is we have a value that's reported for Bray excuse me a phosphorus value reported as 20 the units being reported are in pounds per acre and the test or extractant being reported is a Bray P1 test. So finally we can take report 4 to the table, fill in the blanks here, and what we see is we have a Bray P1 pounds per acre test and the value for that is 20. Um, good stopping point to take a look at these four numbers and actually if we do the conversions between the extractants and the conversion between the units what you'll find is that all four of these values even though very different do come up with the same or represent the same soil test level of phosphorus in our soil. Um, we can take a quick look at this and we can do the conversion real easily here between report 1 and report 2. Um, we have 44 pounds per acre being reported. 44 divided by 2 gives us 22 parts per million. We go over here to um, report 3 and 4. We have that same units relationship that we can do. We have 20 pounds per acre reported. 20 divided by 2 equals 10 parts per million. The uh, conversion isn't quite so easy as far as the Malik versus the Bray P1, but what we'll find is that we have um, th in the table here a way to quickly take a look at that. Um, here we have in column one a Bray P1 test of 10 parts per million. The equivalent in the Malik 3 test is 22. So we can go back and look real quick at our report form here and see that the the value 22 and the value 10 or here in report 1 and report 3. Uh, 10 represents a Bray P1 test, 22 represents a Malik 3 and those are equivalent values. So four soil test uh, values very much uh, the same soil test uh, level as far as phosphorus that we need to think about from a nutrient recommendation. Really the danger here is if we just simply take these numbers and run to a table and come up with a uh, recommendation. And what we want to do is take a look at table 13. Uh, let's just take these numbers. We're going to run to the table. Um, we're going to pull out for the 170 bushel corn yield the recommendation and uh, we can fill those in to the table here and we come up with the 22 is going to be 65, 0 for the 44, 90 for the 10 part per million test and 65 for uh, the 20 part per million Bray P1 test. So uh, what we end up with here is basically three recommendations three recommendations. Uh, two of them are at 65, one at 0, and one at 90. Which one's right? Um, reality is uh, that we have one value that is really wrong here when we talk about that uh, zero value because uh, you know going back and looking at the Bray P1 number if we refer back to our discussion on Tri-State and the video uh, previously that you can watch uh, 10 is less than our critical level and applying no nutrient for that soil test is going to give us a pretty strong risk of seeing a reduction in yield. Actually if we go back and look at it uh, with all the conversions in place what we end up with is that the correct recommendation for all four of these soil test values is 90 and we want to make sure we interpret correctly this particular information. So in summary here what we have is uh, we do want to uh, take a good close look at that uh, phosphorus soil test report. We want to see the elemental phosphorus being represented. Want to know what units what we have either pounds per acre or parts per million. What extractant is being reported and 
the uh, form, whether it's a Bray P1 test, Malik 3, all good tests. We just need to know so that we get into and use the right recommendations. And if there's any doubt when you start looking at these reports as to what you have, if somebody left off the information for what extractant is reported, please call the lab back and confirm what you have before you move forward with making a recommendation. In fact, I would invite you to join me in the next video to talk about how to use this soil test result once we know it to come up with a nutrient recommendation and finally a fertilizer recommendation. Thank you.